Right, guys, we are back again for another episode of Sweat Pod, and we are again in the wonderful apartments of Vonda in Shoreditch. I am your humble co host, Erin Dussard, and I am joined today by two special guests again. We have Fontaine and we have Antonia. Antonia, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, hiya, um, I'm Antonia, and I am a yoga teacher. Um, I've been teaching yoga for a year and a half, and practicing for about seven years. So, that's me. I'm Fontaine. Hi, I'm Fontaine. I am a personal trainer. I've been qualified for around four years. Um, and I am also a Sweat London fit coach. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's me. <laughs> so recently, guys, um, I was scrolling through Instagram as you do, and I came across, um, I'm not gonna call it a rant, because that's what they're calling it nowadays, but. Um, someone was speaking passionately about how they felt objectified and sexualized in the gym by male gym goers. Have you guys ever experienced anything like that before? You go first. You go first. <laughs> you go first. Um, to be honest, mm. I actually haven't personally yeah. um, sort of been... It, it, it kind of depends on what that actually means as well, isn't it? Because, yeah. you know... I mean, in my opinion, if someone kind of comes up to you yeah. and like wants to talk to you, yeah, yeah. I mean, how else are you kind of meant to be, meet people nowadays? Yeah, um, yeah. But in terms of my personal experience, mm -hmm. no. However, I have had experience um, where people may look uh, in a certain way, yeah, yeah. Um, not necessarily stare, yeah, but yeah. You, know, you can see that it's not just a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that person's there. So I've had that, but not nothing that's made me feel really uncomfortable. Okay. So that's my well, experience. Well, where are you, Fonte? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I've seen quite a few um, posts regarding Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So what I will say, my experience as a gym member mm. is very different to that as a PT. Okay. Um, and as a member, yes, I have had men come up to me and people kind of, oh, you know, if they see a bit of bum, a bit of bum or yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> they kind of go off for a hot minute. Um, it's hard because I know that when I enter a gym, being a PT, I'm confident with what I'm doing. Mm. And I'm kind of, in, where I've grown up with a lot of, I'm quite used to male banter or yeah, yeah, yeah. not so much confrontation, but dealing with. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do know that not everyone is as confident and it can be really, really intimidating. Yeah. Um, so as a, that's as a, as a member, as a PT, yeah. it's sh the strangest feeling ever because people almost downplay your role okay. yeah. as, as a PT. Yeah, yeah. You know, I could be on a platform showing a client how to deadlift and there'll be a bunch of guys on their phone bantering on the... Yeah. And somebody will walk in and automatically walk to me and say, are you finished? Yeah. Friend, you need to ask them. Yeah, I'm yeah. working. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's almost like, oh, she's a girl. Yeah. I can bully her or I can kind of make them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. But when that happens, my back goes up and then it's just going to be a showdown. <laughs> so <laughs> I've definitely felt it from mm. two different kind of... Um, angles, but um, in both ways, I, I feel like there is that sexual undertone, like an overpowering undertone that you do get mm. from a lot of men. Yeah, gyms, yeah, a lot of men. Yeah, I mean, this is not a topic that I'm an expert on, yeah. or like I was, I'm gonna say I was quite ignorant to it prior to seeing this post because it's just not something I think about. Um, I have seen it but um i didn't think of it as being like a, a culture like a toxic culture um you know most of my clients are female and i did know that they were they felt intimidated some of them in training in the weights room and stuff but i thought that was more about you know not knowing what to do um not wanting to make a fool of themselves or anything like that i didn't actually think i don't know why but i just didn't think um you could call it ignorance i didn't think that it was something more sinister and feeling objectified or something like that. So it really opened my eyes up when I kind of saw this post, like, rah, it makes sense. Um, but um, I, saw, I saw a couple of people in the comments, as you do, and some people were saying that, well, what do you expect wearing, you know, tight yeah. things and things like that? Yeah, like, yeah. What, do, what do you guys feel about that? Um, 
I mean, I want to touch on what you said, Fonte, that, you know, there are undertones that you do feel. And it's funny that when you mentioned that, it's like, you know what, it's true. I mm. think because I um, have a little bit of confidence now yeah, in the gym, yeah. it's like, I know it's there, but you just kind of like, yeah. oh, it's whatever, isn't yeah, it? You just yeah, you go yeah. there, do your thing, and then that's it. But in terms of uh, what you wear, yeah. um, I do I do think it plays a part. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, as women, we should, like, tone down. Yeah, because it's like when it those... When if someone is, you know, unfortunately raped or something like that, people say, oh, yeah, but look at what she's wearing. Well, I don't feel what, what you're wearing quite, um, should lead to rape or anything like that. So, so what if you're wearing lycra? So what if you're wearing shorts in the gym? Does that mean that you should be looked at in that way? So I think it's context, though, isn't it? Mm. Because um, just like kind of coming here and thinking about this, um, I kind of, I thought about the idea of wearing a bikini, for instance. Yeah. So there's certain places where you know a bikini is yeah. appropriate, and yeah. then there's another place where it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you know I think we should consider like the context that we're in mm. and. And also the culture. I know yeah. we're trying to, we're thinking about changing the culture, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's different environments for different things. Yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think we should be mindful mm. in terms of what we wear, to be honest. Like, okay. I, because even me personally, I've seen, I've gone to gyms and I've seen like women and even I'm and turning shots. like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, yo. <laughs> yeah. But so, is that her fault or is that the brands that are making them? No, 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 no. Not the, I think, it, like you said, there is, there is a time and a place for everything. Mm. I know that whether you like it or not, there's some things that are deemed as quite sexual. Mm. At the minute, bums are in, curvaceous yeah. figures yeah, are yeah, in. Yeah. We, yeah. I know what I'm doing if yeah. I do certain <laughs> things. Like, we're not yeah. going to sit here and act like we don't know. Like, yeah, you yeah. know. I'm going to put these leggings on, yeah. my bum's looking mad, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to expect no one to look at me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It just doesn't work like mm. that. I can't handle the attention that comes with dressing in a particular way in a certain environment, so I don't do it. Yeah, yeah. If you can handle the attention, do your thing. Yeah. I know for me, I find it very uncomfortable. Mm. I, you know, I don't want to be... I think when you're a woman and you kind of portray a certain look or you have a certain look, there's already this kind of stigma attached to you. Yeah. And whether we like it or not, that's just life. We all prejudge. We all make, you know, judgments in our mind mm. prior to meeting people or straight away. Yeah, duh, duh, yeah, duh, 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 yeah. So I just don't. Yeah. Even my time working in Pure Gym, I've got a full bottom half. And because I didn't want that feeling, yeah. I used to wear my jacket around my waist, I would wear tracksuit bottoms, I'm here to work. Yeah, yeah. I don't want anyone looking, I don't want to be glamorous, I hair scrape back, yeah. get into the business. Mm. And um, in an ideal world, we should be able to wear what we want yeah. and people should be comfortable. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't control everything that's around us. So it does play a part. I think if you're confident to wear it and you, you we know, you know when you put your clothes on, I look, yeah, yeah. I'm good. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you know this, you kind of accept that yeah, that, yeah. that may come, yeah. but there is a time and a place. I think that some, there are a big proportion of men that do take it too far, mm. way too far. And what I've found is that as well, they tend to move in packs. Okay. Really? That's Guys will do it. I, I mean, I pull people up for this all the time. So I'll go to the gym, there'll be a guy by himself who'll see me, he won't say a word. Yeah. You get with two or three of your friends, <laughs> this guy is that incredible <laughs> Hulk. <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah. But then I'm the type to turn around and say, you weren't talking like that when I saw you at reception. Yeah. Mm. So everyone, you know, you sometimes it's hard because if you're not that confident person to put someone in that place, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And I have seen men do the craziest things in gyms. T taking pictures of women without oh, wow. their consent. Okay. Okay. You know, I mean, I've, I, I've seen some really wild behavior yeah. and it's worrying yeah. because the moment they put their pin in the door, they turn into these kind of predators that they wouldn't be on the other side of the pod, yeah. which 
is scary. Mm. And I think that's a big thing, especially in 24 hour gyms where there aren't anyone watching. Mm. There are certain PTs who don't understand that actually a woman is, she's actually worried yeah. and uncomfortable. Mm. And it does affect the way women train. We shouldn't have to train completely covered. Guys, some guys take their tops off. Yeah, guys yeah, are, you yeah. know, in the, yeah. but we can't wear a pair of shorts yeah. because you can't control yourself. Mm. And it's, it's hard because when it does happen and you want to complain, there's no one to complain to. Yeah. And then you'll get some female PTs who are like, oh. and then there's others, if you come to me, yeah. <laughs> we're going to be signing petitions and getting the person yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. But it, there is a time and a place yeah. for it all. But it's sad that we do have to do that. Yeah. Just touching on the point in terms of like who we complain to. So there was a gym that I used to work at mm. and it was more or less like a, one of those small kind of um, independent gyms. Yeah. But the, the owner was amazing. Like he would literally like always speak to the female like um, members and be like, if there's any anything yeah. Yeah. that happens, come to me. Yeah. And that he would give um, people warnings and yeah. things like that. So, yeah. you know, it's it's nice that some places, you know, you, you do you feel confident and, yeah. and go, but then there are other places where it's not taken seriously. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it, in the, like, the large corporations, that kind of attention to detail or personal touch can be quite lost. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that in a more kind of smaller gym where someone is more... Um, more in touch with their members and will call out things like that. Um, how, how close, would, would you say it's too extreme to say that it is kind of similar to the rape culture, the, the kind of predatory or, yeah? See, because my, my experience is a little bit different. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of just on the fence, but okay. in terms of what you've described so far, I would definitely say yes, I would agree yeah, with that, yeah, that it yeah. is. I mean, obviously, being in a, a, a gym with over, I'd say, on an average day, we can get up to 400 people passing through, even yeah. more, depending on the time that I leave. I see it all the time. Um, we had one incident where someone supposedly came in... Well, not he did. he came in and a woman was taking part in a yoga class and he just went in and started gyrating behind yeah. her. We've had a situation where wow. somebody, we had a digital studio, which is a completely dark room yeah. with, a, with a big screen, go in and do the same thing in, in a dark room, like literally. And you know, other male PTs at the time were kind of laughing and I was like, this is wow. not funny. Yeah, no, it's not on at all. If it was me, yeah. the police, yeah, yeah, <laughs> not yeah. because of me being violent towards him, but I would definitely call the police because it's assault. Like you're coming in my private, you're my, my space, you're touching me when I don't want to be touched. Because look, if that happened on a tube, yeah. it would yeah. be a problem. Yeah, yeah, if it yeah. happened in an office, it would be a problem. Yeah. Just because it's a gym, it doesn't make it okay. Why do, why do you think that, like you said, some people would act in a vulgar way in the gym, but on the outskirts, you'd never dream of doing that on the street? Why do you feel the gym brings that kind of mentality from some people? I feel that the gym historically is a male-dominated place. Mm. It's a male-dominated kind of industry, and it's like the boys' play, that so-called boys' playground. Mm. And suddenly, there's a couple girls in here, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the testosterone's out the roof. <laughs> yeah. Man's just like, yeah, 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 and yeah. then all of a sudden, women start coming in, mm. and. Yeah, I mean, we, you, you're doing things that may be seen in a sexual way. And it kind of, it really does pick up from there. I think it's the whole boys club type mm. of mentality that you're getting. And this is from really young to really old. Yeah. I've trained in all kinds of gyms. What I have noticed is that when I go to more kind of bodybuilding type of gyms, yeah. that culture isn't there. Okay. Yeah. And the one I was referring to earlier yeah. is a body, bodybuilding gym, yeah. and it's very different. Very different. That okay. culture, I feel so protected yeah. and looked after in that end okay. than I do yeah. the other side. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. not, you mean, you get the odd bit of banter someone made, yeah, but yeah. it's just the, the way they are, it's so different. Okay. So, so different. I find that when I do go to more the heavier side, you're treated like a complete lady. And they're so used to women yeah. being mm. in swimwear from seeing it in comps and yeah, seeing yeah, people yeah. training and stuff. That is completely different. And also I find when I go to those gyms, 
most of the time, the women there are there to work. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I've seen women in other gyms. You're there to find a man. <laughs> yeah. So we can't just point the finger one way because I've seen it the mm. other way round. Mm. I've definitely seen it the other way round. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I that, have. It's, 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 it's that, that mentality of going to work and, like, literally working out. And I think uh, the men in, in... I'm not saying, obviously, in, like, regular gyms yeah, that yeah, people yeah, are not yeah, there yeah. to work out. But, you know, you know that when you go to a bodybuilding gym, it's, it's serious. Like, yeah. everybody's just there to focus. And you was like, you're right in terms of being treated, like, more or less like a lady. Yeah. Like, there's times where, you know, I'm struggling, like, picking up the weight. And mm. then they're like, oh, yeah, let me help. help but it's you. like, that's it. Yeah. They help yeah. and leave. Yeah, and they help and leave. And it's like, <laughs> OK, that's good. Oh, they help and leave. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like um, gym wear is designed? Because I think higher up in like design and technology, when it comes to performance wear, you'll probably find more men. Even for women's women's wear, it's probably men more men designing the women's wear. Do you feel like the the clothing is designed purely for performance, or is someone thinking to themselves, a woman looks better with tight clothes, or um, figure hugging clothes so this is why we're going to design it that way it's not purely for performance there is an aesthetic reason as well I definitely agree with that yeah but then they're you know they're they're also you know uh, meet and demand and if they you know put baggy trousers yeah. or hoodie, like as women we're probably not going to go for that we want <laughs> the high-waisted leggings yeah, yeah, and you yeah, know yeah. the figure hugging um, gym wear so I think it's a bit of both. I don't necessarily think that they're doing it, um, you know, to say, oh... That like ulterior yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do think that they're just meeting a demand, and that demand is to wear, like, figure-hugging clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's a mixture of both. I think, like you said, there is a demand. Um, and again, I think now that fitness wear, fitness apparel is just a part of everyday life. Mm. Like, you go everywhere, people... It's affecting every area. People are wearing trainers to work now yeah, in the yeah. office. It's just one of those things that are, you know, transforming into all areas. Um, of course, you want to wear... So if you've been working hard and you want to show it, you can kind of wear the, the tight. Mm. And again, and it depends on where you train. Again, bodybuilders love hoodies. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're bulky and they've got their hoodie and their belt on, yeah, men yeah. and women. Yeah. So it works different ways. And I find sometimes in more commercial gyms, they'll have central heating. So you're hot, you take off your clothes, you go to a bodybuilding gym, there's no heat in, you put your hoodie on. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it adapts to what it, what's happening, but I feel that, I don't think that it's deliberate, I feel like it's a fashion forward thing. Okay, yeah. right. Funny enough that you did mention that though, I mean, I don't know, have you seen those, um, their, their leggings and shorts where it's like the, <laughs> the bum crease is like intentionally uh, stitched? Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah, in, yeah, yeah. like with those type, type of trousers, <laughs> shorts and trousers, yeah, you no, know that it's done intentionally. And, and, and performance to that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Fontaine, you're a female only personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason particular why? Yes. Is it anything like that? Yes. Because you don't want to train men for that reason? So, um, I decided to become a female-only PT because of my experience when looking for a PT. Okay. So, I, every, I, initially I had a male PT. My first ever PT was a male PT. And I, th I think he thought I liked I don't know what he thought, but then it was the random... This was a while back. Yeah, random yeah. BBM. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to the sauna tonight. Do you want to come? Oh, wow. And I was like, yo... Never in your life talk to me like that <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. So that was that. And and then I dabbled with a female PT. And it was like kind of backwards and forwards. Mm. And then I finally found a male PT who I was just like, cool, this is, this is, you know, like, I liked the way he trained. Yeah. It was Everything was really professional. But I was like, the rubbish I had to go through to get to this yeah. was crazy. And so I qualified and I just felt like, you know what, I'm going to go for, going to give it a try. Yeah. Um, I realised that I made the right choice when I actually started at Pure Gym because there's a board where they put your details up and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. and oh my God. So your email, your contact details go up and I was getting random WhatsApp messages, oh, wow. eyes, love struck faces, <laughs> all kinds of advances. Oh, and wow. the final straw was when I, I was teaching at an event one day and I got a message, it was a big paragraph 
I was like, who the hell is this? Yeah. So I couldn't respond straight away. So mm. I kind of read it quickly. I was like, okay, you want to train legs? Da-da-da, it's a guy. I was like, cool, I'll get back to him. And I didn't, I taught a class for around 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. And by the time I got back to my phone, if you're not interested, just say so. Oh, wow. I was like, yo, this is, a, this is my actual WhatsApp. This yeah, isn't yeah. a dating app. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. And I was really ready to like respond and be like, yo, I don't train women, but I can put you onto someone who's an amazing trainer. Yeah. And the, the guy took real offense to it, but got quite, and I said, you know what, forget yeah. it. I can't do this because I've never come across a man that genuinely just wanted to train. Okay. It always turned into, it was always something else. Yeah, yeah. And then I just had to question myself, like I could do this and make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But am I an escort yeah, or am yeah. I a PT? Yeah. I'm a PT, so I'm going to cut it right there. Yeah. So I just left it. Oh, yeah, wow. and I've just stayed with women. And I feel like for some reason it, it's worked in my favour. Not for some reason, I know why. But it was. it's always nice for other women to see you being confident mm. and how to handle situations in gyms. So I've had clients that have been, oh, no, I don't want to go because that guy... And I'm like, yeah, just come, come, yeah, come yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah, I'll show yeah. you what to do. Yeah. And it's just being firm without being rude, being able to kind of own your space. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes people are doing... A lot of guys do things and don't realise they're doing it. Mm. Yeah, it's that That's kind of... interesting. Yeah, they don't realise <laughs> until you say... Bro, like, that went on. Yeah. You're too close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or that's not nice. Yeah, and I yeah. think some men don't realise their behaviour until you say, so are you happy for someone to talk to your girlfriend like that? Yeah. It's not until it's their girlfriend, then they're like, oh, OK, yeah, maybe yeah. not. <laughs> your girlfriend or your wife, then it's yeah. like, OK, yeah. maybe not. Yeah, definitely owning your space and, like, being confident. But it's just, like, there's there are people who aren't at that level yet, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And it's, like, just... just Because, like, like you, like, I'm, I'm fine. Like, I just go there and do my thing. But actually thinking about, uh, sort of, like, your clients who are yeah. not necessarily used to being yeah. in that environment, like, how do we, yeah. you know, yeah. break that narrative? I mean, you come from a, a more yoga environment. Yeah. Is, is it completely different there? Can't, I've gone to a few yoga classes. I mean, there have been Bikram, but... They wear even less clothes yeah. in a in a yoga studio yeah. than they do. So, is the culture similar there, or is it completely different? Well, I guess because it's yoga, you know, we don't really say anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's no communication. Yeah. But you do get the stares, you do get the looks. Mm. But I think I've I've kind of trained myself to be so oblivious yeah. that I literally just go in. I know what I'm doing, and that's it. But I do feel I still feel the undertone. Okay. Um, which is which is interesting that but it's just how I've handled it but yeah. now that obviously we're having this discussion like there are people who won't really take that approach and will be very aware of mm. being stared at or looked at in a certain yeah. way so you know um, but yeah it's it's I wouldn't say it's as bad mm. um, because obviously it's more the spiritual side of things people are trying to yeah. control certain aspects of their um, you know, personality and yeah, things like yeah. that. So it is very different, um, but it's, it is, I personally think, it's still yeah. there. Like, what would you... What could establ establishments do, fitness establishments do more to kind of safeguard female gym members? Um, for some reason, signs came up. <laughs> but I think that's a bit too much. But um, somehow, like, just have an open an open door where if there is, uh, uh, if, if there are experiences uh, that make made someone feel uncomfortable, that mm. people can actually go and, and actually complain mm. and, and there is actually a consequence to it. Um, so, you know, bigger establishments could potentially put something in place in relation yeah. to that because, you know, like I said, in that independent gym, mm. he was very clear, he, he made it very clear and yeah, there yeah. were consequences. People, you know, were put on short-term bans and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So... You know, just having that space to be able to go and, you know, say if you ever felt like you've been uncomfortable, if yeah, someone's yeah. approached you, that, um, you know, you can you can complain and you can and you can and you are heard as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's a really strange because I think it's important that you do feel comfortable that you can speak to someone. I think it's a very great area because mm. sometimes people just be ah, oh, he's looking at me, you yeah. know, and it's like where do we kind of draw the line and just have it as is this happening yeah, yeah. for real, for real? Or yeah. are you just, you know, so there is definitely, there needs to, there is a need for a safe space for women to go and complain. Mm. Um, 
it's strange because I've just, I feel like I've been in the industry and been around like so many men mm. that I'm not uncomfortable walking into a room and complaining to a yeah. room of men. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because of the type of industry is as a woman, if you walk into the manager's office and there's like four guys sat in there, what's up, love? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, this guy's looking at me, you. <laughs> all right, and then she leaves, oh, she was all right though, innit? <laughs> and then it's kind of, it's yeah. kind of like that, but. It's, there definitely needs to be a, a kind of, whether it be online, I think online sometimes can be the best way to avoid that because mm. we don't always enter a room where there's a room of men who you can complain to. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I kind of, I, I'm, I've been really, my last manager was amazing. So I didn't have any of anything like that. Mm. I'd be like, Trevor, he'd be like, oh, who is it? Okay, I'm gonna have a look. <laughs> but he was just, and he, but then he comes from a bodybuilding background. Okay, back to bodybuilding. So if he comes from a bodybuilding background <laughs> yeah, yeah. where that's not what you do. So it's completely different. And I've had other managers that you go and talk to and they're like, yeah, on the computer, all right, yeah. I'll, talk, I'll deal with it later. And it never gets dealt with. So it, there does, there de there's definitely space for like people for people to complain. I think with the posts that I've been seeing recently, it's mm. been quite hard because you don't want to bash people because as much as there are guys that are doing it, there's a load of guys who aren't yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Yes. There's a load of guys who aren't doing it, and I and I commend them. But it's almost like you need to pull your bro out when he's acting wild, because I've and open your eyes. So if someone says to you that guy keeps thinking and. and you know, as a man, and yeah, yeah. Like, I'm uncomfortable. Don't be like, oh, but you're pretty, that's why he's looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just give him a little bit of a stare, like, bro, calm down, mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not that. So I think that, I think the way forward is for other men to kind of put other men in their place yeah. when they see it happening. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned earlier that you feel that it's a male dominated industry. Do you feel like it's shifting more? Um, in terms of women in fitness, you know, I, I see a lot of a lot of female PTs. Like I've been been a PT for maybe eleven years now, so I've seen from the transition, and there's a lot of ladies in in fitness, which is which is great. Do you feel Do you feel the shift? Do you feel like it's kind of changing in the fitness industry? I definitely do. Yeah. I definitely do feel that there is a shift, um, but in terms of you know being. The, the, the undertones mm. in terms of in the gyms, like you were saying, it, it is still there. So maybe we just have a bit of time to go before that shifts as well. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, let's speak about something a little bit more empowering. Um, women in fitness, women being strong and things like that. What kind of training do you do? So I, um, I do yoga mainly now. Yeah. I used to dabble in a few different things. So I used to do a lot of pole dancing, okay. um, obviously yoga as well, and um, some bodybuilding. So, but now this, throughout this year, for instance, I've just focused on, on yoga. How um, pole fitness, I can imagine, is like, it's like a lot of body weight stuff, right? Yeah, so you're, you're so holding your entire pole, body then, on the pole. People think, I'm still sure people just imagine that it's, you know, you're just walking around a pole and things like that. No <laughs> way, no way. And the thing is, is not you know what, the the, um, the body weight, it's it's probably not even, I think you, you can build that up over time, mm. you know. But for me, it's it's the burns. So with pole, you, 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 you use um, your skin to obviously hold on yeah, to the yeah, pole yeah. quite a lot. So... That's more of a more of a problem <laughs> than anything. Else. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of um, a lot of upper body strength okay. and obviously flexibility as well. And you stop that now? You don't do that anymore? Uh, no, I, I stopped that now. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go get back into yeah. it? But yeah, for now, it's just it's just yoga. It's it's hard to it's hard to uh, do so much. I find I don't know how you yeah. feel, but as a woman, like you know, it's 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 not easy to try and do so much yeah, yeah. Um, so. so how often do you do yoga every day oh, wow. yeah every single day some days are very different so mm. some days I go full full on um, do a lot of like strength training at the moment I'm working on handstands okay. so you know there's a lot to that and um, and then other days I'll have like one day where it's is very soft so it's more like more relaxing and not like crazy yeah. um, more intense training so yeah it's very versatile what about you, Fontaine? Your your style of training? Oh, I'm gonna yeah. I've, I've the same. I think when I initially started, I was 
getting into like the plyometrics yeah, yeah. and you know all that stuff like move yeah I was I was all there and my trainer at the time was amazing at mm. it so I was kind of getting into that with him and then as time went on I kind of moved more and more into weights and then that just turned into like an obsession with bodybuilding <laughs> even though I've never quite got there but yeah, I yeah. Just, just a complete obsession with it um I think that that came from obviously aesthetics I think everyone people don't like to admit to it but we most people attain to aesthetics yeah, and if yeah. you're talking aesthetics you're talking bodybuilding and so I always train around that kind of yeah kind of that that kind of ethos of, of bodybuilding that's yeah. kind of the basis of my training is that. Um, but I do try to mix it up. But I'd say that that is it. Did you, um, when you first started like weight training, both of you, mm. did you, was there like a kind of negative stigma? Like, oh, don't lift up too much weights, so you're going to get bulky and things like that. Did you get that? I didn't. No. I, um, okay. I, 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 because I went straight to the bodybuilding gym. So, yeah. you know, everybody wants to get <laughs> yeah, bulky, both men <laughs> and women. <laughs> Um, but funny enough, um, I so there was a time where one of my, me and my friend we went to we went to a, a, um, one of those bigger gyms yeah, like yeah. the commercial ones, and you know we did get like a few comments like and, and looks like oh my gosh like you yeah, know that yeah. you're lifting a bit heavy like but in the bodybuilding gym it's like yeah like lift more yeah, yeah. like <laughs> yeah so um, yeah but I I I, I didn't I, it, it it was it was different in in terms of the gyms that I went to yeah. I think it's definitely like a, a generational thing. Um, some of the uh, some older people they tend to f have that kind of uh, misconception that lifting weights automatically you're going to get bulky. So I do have you know I have heard some women say, "Oh, I don't want to lift too heavy because I don't want to get big muscles." And, you know, you just got to retrain their mind that you know you're not going to get big because you don't your body doesn't produce as much testosterone. You've got to be eating loads and loads of food if you want to get big. But I still, I feel like in the younger generation coming through now, those who are working out now, you know, it's great to see a lot, lot of women lifting a lot of weights. And I, I find it quite empowering as well. I think it's really good. And I think also um, the narrative has changed in terms of, obviously women are more focused on the lower region. So, you know, lifting heavy on lower part, that's fine. But then when it comes to like the upper body, it's like, no, 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 I don't yeah, want it because yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. get the big muscles, yeah. like you said. So yeah. depends on the body part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's been a change in uh, what's fashionable in physique. I remember when I was a bit younger, it was everyone was stick thin with big boobs and yeah. everything. But now it's changed to a more African physique where the lower body is fuller people are not afraid to eat I remember you'd always see oh you know how to lose 10 pounds and you still see it but now yeah. it's like how to get a juicy bum how to build glutes how to build... so everything's kind of changing which allows you to feel more comfortable to do that yeah. I still come across women who are scared to to lift weights two three years into being a PT and I'm like babe I've been doing this yeah. <laughs> Do I look like I'm, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not bulky. And again, it takes a lot of food, a lot of convincing. I find that a lot of the resilience that I have received have been from men. Oh, really? Wow. Other men within, like, your community, oh, you're going to get muscly, all right. You know, my dad, you're soon turned raw to suddenly, <laughs> you know, all of that kind of stuff and the banter. And yeah. if I show my dad a video of me doing something, no, 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 no. You see, that's going to make you look like this. And... And, and even younger guys, or if you go and people that, men that don't necessarily train will say, oh, don't go too big, or mm. they'll send you pictures, don't get like that. Yeah. Don't. And I remember um, during COVID, I was posted on a really popular page and there was guys in the comments, nah, she's too muscly, she looks strong, she looks mean. I was like, you don't understand how long I've been waiting for someone to say that to me. And I was like, yes. My friend was like, oh, look, they're saying you're muscly. And like, I was like, oh, babe, you don't understand. That's a compliment to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah. I was like, yep. Yeah. Someone's like, oh, she looks like she'll kill you. I was like, yep, I will. <laughs> so it's quite nice when it happens. If When you're in that field and someone says it, it's a compliment. But if you're not, it's a bit like, hmm. I don't like it, or yeah, I don't. Yeah. But I'm always pushing women with weights. Always. Yeah. What do you say to women who are um, very tentative and not confident with weights? Like how do you get some to build that confidence to then start lifting weights and things like that? I guess just, just I mean, I don't, I've never trained um, sort of women with weights, but yeah. I think uh, what I would say in terms of how I've sort of 
change my own mind is, you know, just, just start slow. And like you said, that to know that you're not going, you can control how you look. Yeah. Like you, you're not going to get, you know, super muscul mus uh, mus muscly or yeah, yeah. whatever. If, if, you, if you want to go down that route, you know, you can do, but it's not, it, it, there's so many options. Yeah. So it's just starting slow, knowing what you want and just building up. And then if you really feel really uncomfortable, then... You know, there's so many resources out there now that you know you can that can guide you, yeah. and if you you know get a PT to start off, so you kind of know what direction to go yeah. in rather than just doing it yourself. So. And what do you say to your female clients who are like who say that? I always say to them like I when, once I've got back history and they tell me they've done this, oh I was doing this class, I was doing this, and I'm like okay fine, so we've tried all of those things. Yeah. This is the one thing we haven't tried. Yeah. And I always put it to them in a way of preventative kind of situation so as we're getting older like I always use my age as like a tool like honestly you're gonna you know the more muscle you have later on in life the better it is it's maintaining your figure and um, functional like just certain little things and even when I'm training and they're like oh I don't want to train my back I'm like babe I'm trying to get rid of this bulge under my bra strap mm -hmm. like that's what's going to help to get rid of this like yeah, yeah. I always associate an exercise with everyday life so you know, if we're training the biceps or the triceps, I'm like, look, one day my son's going to get married. I'm going to be waving him down the aisle. I don't want this. <laughs> like, I always kind of associate it with. Mm. And they're like, oh, so if I do this, I'd... yes, this is what happens. And when you relate it to everyday things, they tend to be a bit more receptive to it. And I do start off kind of slowly, as you said, um, but it's quite nice watching them kind of grow into it. Mm. Or where like I've, I, I had a week where I was away and I came back and everyone was like, I saw your client, she was in. And I'm like, oh my God, Kim, someone, they told me you were working really hard. Mm. She's like, yeah, I'm <laughs> Or I get the little videos back or they start to feel that change. And it's just people trusting you. And that's where I believe in practicing what you preach. So I try to do that mm. and showcase it as well. And not hide, not hide yeah. failures, not hide that things are happening, not hide that, you know, diet wise or yes, I've been overeating, I've been lifting, getting stronger, but I'm also carrying a bit more fat than I want to because of my diet. Mm. So if I don't want to have that bulky look, I need to pull back on the cake or whatever it is that I've been overeating. So I always try and keep it really real with them. Yes, if you eat excessive amounts and you start to lift heavier and heavier, you will look bigger. You'll yeah. be in a good yeah. shape. You'll be yeah, tight, yeah, but you'll yeah. be bigger. Yeah. yeah. If you bring it back, bring in a bit more cardio, you'll be where you, you effectively want to be. Yeah. So I always put it in those kind of layman terms and just break it down for them. Mm, great. That transparency is like yeah. so important, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, it's great to finish on a more positive note. Um, I feel like we touched on an important, sub important subject that's not to kind of be brushed over. Um, men definitely need to kind of look at their actions a little <laughs> yeah. bit in the gym. Um, I found it quite enlightening because, like I said, it's something that I've been quite, quite ignorant to. Um, so, yeah, thank you both for, for coming on. And, um, yeah, guys, that is a wrap. Yeah.